who has created all things and who has sent his spirit to the world go to the to the eternal divine path who has sent all the prophets and sent many guiding lights to humanity and now he has put all together as one revelation so man might know the plan of God and his story history and how he has guided man to this point. Now man has a choice to follow the eternal divine path and become one or many go against his will and will not be part of the plan. That is when the seventh angel comes, will happen. The humanity has a choice to choose two ways. And that revelation has come from the only God, the one God. There is no separation between men and men. There is no separation between religions. There is no, not such a thing as one religion is better than the other. All we have to go to the prophet of that religion and listen to what he has revealed to the humanity. No other man but the prophet himself should be followed, should be listened to, should be told as the truth and the mouthpiece of God. God has sent his spirit to the world and it came and it went through the path we will reveal to humanity and we have revealed to humanity. You can read in a more detail about it in our website, in our teaching, in our writing. It's a very simple path. It is five step that covers all the great religions of the world. When the Spirit of God came to the world, to the darkness, to the chaos that we read in the Bible in the beginning. He meditated in that chaos, in that darkness. And God realized how lost those unit consciousnesses and souls were. As he meditated more and more, he realized the nature of man, which is ego. And ego is the root of all the problems on earth. Ego means the illusion of separation from God. In order to shatter that illusion of separation from God, we have to meditate, awaken our spiritual forces, realize that we and God are one. There is no separation. And everyone else also is a spark of God. There is no difference between us and anything in the universe. We are part of the universe and the universe is a part of us. If we separate any part of God or the universe from any other part, we are not manifesting the spirit of God on earth, but we are creating ego. Ego separates. God unifies. And that is the difference between God realized and he who is not realized, who still thinks in the terms of we and them, us and others, me and my neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You and your neighbor are one. There are a part and parcel of God. You are a spark of God. Of course, if your neighbor is not a realized person, he or she will separate himself from you. And you have no choice but to deal with that situation. But also, at the same time, realize that he is not separate from you. He is a spark of God, and you may be, help, be able to help him also to realize this. Therefore, reaching to humanity and giving this message to every man, woman, child, and whoever 
lessons is a part of educating them that God is one. We are all a part of Him. There is no separation between man and man, man and woman, woman and woman, and men and men, all are God. There is, there is one God, He is everything and everywhere. There is nothing that you can separate and say this is not God. That it was ego or evil or devil which makes man fall is really an illusion. It's the illusion of separation from God. If we shatter an illusion, we will not fall in temptation of the world. Because we realize the more we go to the world, the more we will be separated from God. That is why Christ said, it is easy for a camel to go through the eye of the needle, but it is harder for a rich man to go to God. As you realize that, why do you want to keep all those things that keep you from God? Share it with other person or people who do not have a need what you can offer them. At least they can have physiological and need and safety need be taken care of. So you see, the more we keep it, the more we fall from God, the more others suffer, and we create a situation that violence, destruction, wars, and unhappiness will follow. Those they do not have, they are not happy because they don't have it. Those who have, they are not happy because they are falling away from God. What is the solution? Share. Share with one another. Let those who do not have give, receive some of those who have. As John the Baptist said, or Christ said, you know, if you have two coats, give one to the poor. And let them also have something. At least they are not cold and maybe they close their eyes and they meditate and we, they also become realized. So we can see sharing is important, is necessary, it is the way of stopping all this madness that we have on earth. Therefore, examine your life and see if you can help in any way. And create the communities of light. Of course, out of communities of light, the fear will come to the people, to individuals. They don't have any support. They are alone. They are only people by themselves. Therefore, they have to have enough so they can take care of themselves. They have to have enough for their old age. They have enough for the medical thing. But in the communities of life, they know they will be taken care of. When they are old, they don't need to hoard, you know, finances so they are going to be okay when they are old. In communities of life, they will be taken care of. The children will be great children, they will be nurtured and beautiful and they can come and learn and meditate from the very early in the childhood so they realize ego, selfishness uh, and self-centeredness which is the cause of all the problems on earth. So we can see the first step you realize that the first step is to realize yourself, to realize human, to realize ego realize separation from the spirit, from oneness. And as he realized that, he realized even more how selfish and self-centered, you know, the unit consciousnesses were around him. And he started telling them all these things, he started to helping them out. But they will not listen. They will say, no, our way is better than your way. Our way is better than you, God. You would not know how good it feels to be selfish and having all those things. <laughs> but as some of them meditated with him and they progressed and awakened their spiritual forces and they felt the oneness with God, they realized what they had is very pale in compared with the joy and beauty and oneness and freedom they felt being one with God. Therefore, they listened, they awakened their spiritual forces. He start having more people around self as people who have awakened their spiritual forces. Therefore, a community is formed. 
they were more helpful there. The pe their unit consciousnesses were stronger, more powerful. That's why Prophet Muhammad says the number is the hand of God. The more people meditate, awaken their spiritual forces, become one, and uh, spread this message together individually and collectively, the more powerful and the more the message will be heard. And that's what exactly happened. The group start feeling stronger, more powerful, more effective. Therefore, more unit consciousnesses gather together and eventually communities form. Of course, though they realize that still there are people in the community are still selfish, self-centered. They are still thinking only about themselves and they bring the bad feeling and um, energy done in the community. Therefore, they realize that every individual and the unit consciousness should realize the community is number one, God is number one. And therefore, they can and learn and progress in sharing more and more with the community instead of saying, what is the thing about me, this community? That is the sacrifice that the Spirit of God had to go through. That sacrifice have symbolized and with the Christ coming to earth, the Spirit of God. Of course, the Spirit of God have gone to earth many times. The Spirit of God came to earth as Adam. The Spirit of God came to earth as Noah. The Spirit of God came to earth as Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. And Christ, Moses, many, many prophets. Before Prophet Muhammad, there were 144,000 of them. And after him, of course, they have been few to this point. So the community of light, the community to form those communities, sacrifice necessary. And where we do find the communities in the Old Testament. The whole Old Testament is based on the God finding a group, a, 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 the tribes of Israel, communities of life. What did he demand them to do? To accept him as their only God. No image, none on earth, none in the heaven, not under the water, should be accepted as God, but the formless, invisible, nameless, and eternal. That's the only God which unifies. If you give him a shape, if you give him a name, if you give him any attributes of the manifested world, that will separate man from man. That will separate humans from humans. That will separate groups from groups. So, in order not to create that separation, we all have to accept God as a spirit and worship him in a spirit. And that means to close our eyes and go to the spirit and to know God and pray to him and learn from him and know how the spirit works and the spirit is formless, invisible, nameless and eternal. Therefore God has no name, no shape, no form. The ultimate God. The one that we are striving to know. Of course, everything else is God. Okay, you can make a statue and say, yeah, the spirit of God is also in that. Yeah, that is true. But that which separate man from man. Therefore, the highest realization of God is formless, invisible, nameless, and eternal. So let us all know him and go to him and ignore any name, form, or shape as God, but see the God in each other and know that the spark of God, the spirit of God, is in all of us. With this all, we shatter the um, obstacle in our path to realize God in each other, but in a sense, give them a name or shape or something that is not really a part of us. Therefore, the communist of light was introduced to humanity by choosing Abraham. Of Abraham. Abraham given two promises, the scepter and the birthright. Abram was the father of Ishmael. 
Therefore, when he gave the promises to Ishmael, Abraham, it was for Ishmael. He gave the promise of a prophet and a territory coming from the children of Ishmael. Then God changed the name of Abram to Abraham. And then he said he is going to have another son from Sarah. And also changed the name to Sarah, Sarai to Sarah. Abram means the father of one nation. Abraham means father of many nations. And Sarah means our princess, it means princess. Sarai means princess. Sarah means our princess. There is more than one prince, prince, princess. And then he promised the same thing, scepter and the birthright, which was for the children of Isaac. And of course, we see it's fulfilled. Both of them, God has fulfilled it. And if you go to many rooms, they, especially those who don't believe in God, they say, they don't believe in God, prove it to me. There is one proof. He said he's going to do that. And he sent a prophet from the children of Ishmael and a prophet from the children of Isaac. And then he also gave them great territory. The children of Ishmael have the territory from Saudi Arabia all the way to, to North Africa to South America. The children of Isaac have the territory from the north of uh, Israel, even now recently in Israel, all the way to Europe and the North America. So you can see he fulfilled the prophecy of the birthright and the prophecy of the Messiah or the prophet coming from the both Isaac and Ishmael. He has done it. He has fulfilled his promises. Does he exist? If you even you don't know your spirit, intellectually you can see and say, yes, he did it. He said he will do it, therefore he exists for sure. So how can you stand atheist or agnostic if you see God said he's going to do it and he has done it. And there, therefore you can see that these two prophets have been promised the two sons of Abraham and Abraham. Even this, if this Jews and Christian and Muslim realize they, they, we have unified three great religions of the world together. And they will realize, yeah, God did promise also Ishmael to have a prophet to come from him. Actually, the Jewish people knew about that when the prophet Muhammad came. And when he uh, started giving his revelation, a lot of them did accept Islam. And later on, of course, when he did not accept, you know, anybody over anybody and said everybody is equal, you know, he was opposed. But we have to put the politics away. We have to realize God. We should not follow for politics of the earth that has been destroying the earth. And we are separating each other and we don't want to hear the truth. But the truth is different when, when the politically is correct. It actually become politically incorrect. It's true. If you want to be godly, you know, and of course the more we teach this and the more people realize that, yeah, God did promise, you know, also Ishmael that the prophet will come from them. How can we say, you know, only Christ is the you know, only way? Because God said, you know, also a prophet's going to come from Ishmael. And no other prophet came from Ishmael but Prophet Muhammad who established, you know, Islam, okay? And then, of course, there's a lot of misconception about Islam. You know, and any religion come later, you know, the previous religion tried to, you know, uh, dissect that religion and find a lot of problem and, and bad thing about them, okay? And, but that is not the way it should be. We should really study all religions and understand them and know them come to the satsang, come to, the, to our room, ask questions, and eventually say, yes, it's not as bad as, as I thought it was, you know, just like in a question about the, the Prophet Muhammad marrying a seven years old, you know, girl, you know. Of course, it was in the beginning nine years old, but after a couple of months, he gets seven, and I was wondering when, when it goes to the four or five. <laughs> but anyway, it, it, it is... It, 
as I explained it to them, that you know they will not consume marriage until the girl is having his first you know monthly you know, period, and then she's considered a woman. So it's not a pedophile <laughs> situation, or many many other things. Or they they say that Prophet Muhammad said you should you know uh, kill the unbelievers and and they generalize it that anybody who is not a Muslim should be killed. Even my Muslim themselves even uh, generalize it to that point. But he was talking about the situation between Muslim and Me from people in Mecca, which were attacking them, destroying their homes and, and businesses and all that. So we have to realize that we, we should not take the truth out of context and bring it and generalize it to, to something which is not meant to be. So we have to realize that God is also promised another prophet also from the Ishmael. So God did promise all this thing and of, of course he also chose the uh, Judah and Jewish people as or Hebrews to set up, set up a uh, example for humanity what is the, the coming of light, comes of light when God chooses people the I mean, poor people choose coming into God as the king and his laws as the law of their communities, and that will bring peace, unity, oneness, you know, beauty, and non-violence to the community. How can there be violence? There is a community strongly, you know, close and watchful, you know, what's happening in the community. Of course, we have neighborhood, neighborhood watch these days, but it's not really the communities of life. Communities of life, it's even more than only watching your neighbor. It means really knowing your neighbor, you know, becoming one with each other, you know, even you know, doing the uh, spiritual practices with each other. This is much, much more than watching, which really you don't watch all the time. But if you have a strong, uh, close-knit, community, somebody is always watching the community and crime will not happen. And why be criminal anyway if, if your physiological and safety needs provided and the kingdom of God is on earth? If in that air time, when the kingdom of heaven is on earth, something happened, there is a criminal, then it's okay if we have a very harsh punishment for them. So, you can see God went through this process of awakening of spiritual forces realizing that the community and oneness and unity between the people are necessary. Sacrifice is needed to create the commerce of life. And there are, of course, many people who have been also progress, they start falling off the path. The Maya came back to them, their ego came back to them, and they fell back from where he had taken them. So he was very upset about that. See, what have I done? I have done so many work for these people and they are not here anymore. Therefore, he realized that being attached to the result of your action also is not good. You should not be attached to the result. Therefore, he did his best. He tried to meditate, awaken his spiritual forces, guide people to carry the comments of light, sacrifice for it, but said, well, it's really a spirit who's doing it through me and I'm not going to be attached to the result and he gave the result to God or to, to the universe. And then, of course, he realized later, greater than you know, surrendering the result is be submissive to God. And that means that God is really doing the action through me and therefore I'm not going to be attached to it anyway. I'm not the doer, but God is the doer. I am unattached to the result. Of course, that is the essence of not being uh, unhappy, not being attached to the result. But it, 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 it doesn't mean that you do not expect result. You know, surrendering and submission doesn't mean you do not expect result, but you are not attached to it. That, of course, comes with the Prophet Muhammad. But as we said, God has already promised Ishmael also, a prophet will come from them. It was the scepter that has been promised both to Ishmael and Isaac. And he brought the concept of Islam. Islam comes from the word Taslim, 
which means surrendering and submissive to God, and that is the highest spiritual realization man can reach. To become completely surrendered and submissive to the will of God and know what is the will of God is for them and fulfill that will. That is bring the greatest happiness to that individual, to that person, to the people around him or her because they realize what God wants them to do. And they do it. They do not resi resist it. They don't hesitate. They, they jump at it and go with it and they accomplish what they have been called for. Therefore, if you meditate and awaken your spiritual forces, you create, of course, the goal of everybody is to create communities of light, sacrifice for it, live in it, uh, and become friends and submissive to the will of God. Of course, he is not only helping very few around himself and herself, and eventually he realized, what am I doing? Am I just, I'm separating what I have created of the communities of light or, or anything I am working with from the rest of the universe. Therefore, he realized that God is everything. God, there is no separation. I have to work and give this action to every unit consciousness in the, this universe, and if there are many other universes, so be it. We have to tell this to every unit consciousness. They have to awaken their spiritual forces. They have to create the comings of life. They have to sacrifice. They have to surrender and submit to God in the community and become universalist. Universalist means God, the universe is my home. God is father, my father and mother. And I am his child, his son, and I have to do his will and become in his image. A universalist shatters all the normals of the mind because he's, he's God, he's everything. So how can you separate anybody from anybody or anything from anything? Therefore, become universalist. That is the essence and the spirit of the teaching of Bob and Baha'u'llah, who have brought the concept of universalism, and they are a part of the eternal divine path. By doing that, he became a dynamic a spiritual being. He realized God, he realized ego, he realized what separates man from man. He separated the illusion of separation from God, or Maya, and he destroyed any illusion of the separation. He attracted other people to come to him and around him and create the moments of light. He realized sacrifice is necessary and taught others also to sacrifice for the community. And therefore he, who's that? It's okay. Uh, he realized that, you know, he, um, he have to create this communities of light and sacrifice is needed. He also realized that shouldn't be attached to the result of action, even better than that. Let the God come through him. That's why we say all tanks go to God. If we take the tanks to ourselves and say, yeah, thank you, thank, thank you for thanking me and all that, it means we are the doer. We for God. God is doing it. Of course, being submissive is very hard. <laughs> You know, and a lot of people forget it's God doing it through them, and they become attached to the results and all that. And that's why it's recommended if you are not submissive all the time, at the moment you remember you are getting attached to the result, say, God, sorry, I forgot. Here is the result. I surrender the result to you. So uh, you can always go back and surrender the result, so be free from it. And then you become universalist. It means that you don't see separation between anything of any, from anything in the universe. You might hate the action of a person, but you will not hate the person, because the person is the essence of God. And uh, therefore you try to correct them instead of uh, beating them in the head and, and creating violence and destroying the structure. If you cannot change them or, or correct them, leave them alone. And, and go and be with the other people that are more like-minded like you and create the comes of life. Eventually, when we reach the critical point on earth, the communist of light will succeed and many people want to be in the communist of light. They don't want to be in the communist of light because they have not even seen one. <laughs> they haven't been in one. They have le lived in their own little lives and they're afraid. What is it? It's new. It's something amazingly different than that they know. But when 
the site, they lived in it, they saw the beauty of the co cooperation and oneness and, and help from each other, you know, they realized, that's where I want to be. I don't want to be that one little selfish world that really, you know, make me unhappy and, and all that. So, um, we can see many people will join us, of course, after you become a universalist, you become an elect. An elect is the person who is incorruptible, who is connected to God, who is intellectually strong, who is spiritually connected, and who has followed the eternal divine path, and they have realized our teaching in a much more deeper level, and will work to create the communities of light, the hierarchy on earth, and eventually the kingdom of heaven on earth. Such a people are those who delay their own salvation in order to bring many, many consciousness to higher consciousness and eventually pure consciousness. And then they also will enter the pure consciousness and become one with God. And that pure consciousness, of course, is the goal of life. It is the symbol in our, the greatest sign in the bottom, which at the end becoming the image of God, which is in the center of the greatest sign. That is the goal of the life, to become divine, to become one with God, become in the image of God, between unity, manifest great um, qualities of God, compassion, love, unity, uh, oneness, nonviolence, and education, and progress. These are the signs of God or the qualities of God. It's not something you say, I'm God, but I'm not, I have no compassion, no love, no ability to sacrifice or, or surrender and submit to His will, but I'm God at the same time. That, that doesn't mean, that's not what the mystical people call you are God. Yes, you are. You have the potential to become God. Therefore, we can see that God wants us to come here perfect. In many rooms I heard that they say, really, God, God never said, you know, I have to become perfect. I'm just saved by believing in such and such a thing. But if you read the Bible, if you read the scripture, even Christ himself clearly said, be perfect as your Father in heaven. Okay. And therefore, becoming perfect and in the image of God is the goal of life. Of course, human love create a lot of dogmas, hang up in their tradition and customs, and that God said is foolish. But going to God is the only way, so we have to examine everything in our life, everything in our tradition, in, in our life, or, or anything that we are hanging into, and let go of them if they are not the Word of God. That is the eternal divine path. That is the base of our teaching. That is what God has sent us to humanity again and brought the unity of our religion here together. This is the message of the mission of Maitreya. This is the message of humanity. Those who come to it, follow it, they pro prosper, they progress, they become one with God. Those who resist it and say any teaching other than this, unfortunately, will not be born for a long, long time or reborn for a long time. This is the time of sundering. This is when the wheat is, will be separated from the shaft. Those who follow the eternal divine path, realize all religions of the God, sent by one God, they are the wheat. Those who don't and insist in their own little religions and dogmas, they are the shaft. Go ahead, Ban Broke, Bin Broke. Hi uh, guys, how are you doing? <laughs> Did the subject come off now? What is the subject? 
uh, um, uh, we did not understand what you said, Bimbrook. Can you repeat that? What is the subject? What is the subject about? What is the subject about? Okay, the sub. This room is the mission of Maitreya, eternal divine path. It is the revelation that revealed all the revelation before it, unified it, and brought to humanity. This is the last revelation from God. You can read more about it in our website. Somebody will post the website for you. You can go to the website and read about it. This unifies all religions of the world. It's the opening of the seven seals prophesied in the revelation. It will be opened in the end time. It is the seventh angel which will pure the last um, waste into humanity. And it is the end time. This is the time of judgment. This is the time of sundry. This is the revelation of sundry. This is the time that many religions have been waiting for. This is the end time. And therefore, if you had not left the room, you would have known much more about it. But since he left the room, probably he will not find much about it. Therefore, we will be here again. We have another one hour. And something left, we can discuss more in detail the mission, or you can ask questions if you have. If you don't have questions, probably I will continue uh, talking about the mission in more detail. But if you have a question, raise your hand. Yes, all the questions have been answered. There is not really much of a question left that we haven't answered. We have been answering the question for the last 22 years or more. There have been many, many questions that have all been recorded, have been put to text, and all available in the mission. Actually, I hope one day we can create a database and put it on the website that anybody had a question, put it in the database and come up with the question they are looking for and it's going to be there and it has been many answers. Therefore, nothing can hold back at this time. At this time, all answers are given. We have not said that only we have revealed only a part of the tablet, but we have revealed the whole tablet, the whole Akashic record, and whatever is needed for humanity to know. Go ahead, Snow Jewel. As a Read probably you weren't here in the beginning as it was read to everyone. We do not answer the questions typed on the text. Please take the mic and ask your question in the mic. The answers will not be given if they are typed. I appreciate that. Well, that is what a lot of people say. We don't have any mic. Please go and get a mic and return maybe a little later or next week and come to the mic. That is one requirement in this room. You have to say it in the mic. Thank you. It is very easy for people and come people and, and write in texts, but you have to be pretty brave coming to the mic. And we are looking for brave people, people who are not afraid of coming out and say who they are. I'm sure you are not, but I'm just talking about the general. That is what one rule we have put here. You know, please go have a mic. It is not very difficult thing to do, and not very expensive either. And uh, 
and probably sometime even they come with the computer you acquire. So please bring bring mic and come to the mic and tell us your question. You know, we do not mind a answering any of your question. Of course, uh, questions like the one you ans ask, you can always come to the week and there are other people who can answer those questions very readily for you. And even if you put in text, <laughs> they uh, still will answer you. Uh, we hope that we keep this room for higher questions, questions about the mission, about the teaching, about what you are doing, why we claim what we claim. If you have a question about that, if you don't agree with us, that's fine. If you are put it in a nicely and in a very uh, good question about why you don't agree with us, of course we can discuss what we say is true or what you say is true. If what you say is true, we follow you. Okay, just like uh, you know, till six months ago, I didn't care too much about genealogy. Okay, I, I didn't believe in it. I didn't care about it. And and one brother came here and made me see the light, <laughs> and he made me believe in it. So we followed him, and and he told us exactly how it is, or other prophecies that another gentleman brought us to us. In the beginning, we were very resistant to, to the truth behind them because there was so much of it, and they, they were said, how could you know he find all this? And as he insisted that he is correct, we accept him. So if you have something that you are more correct and truthful, bring it in. We are the seeker of the truth. We hate dogma and ego. That's two things we don't like in this mission. Dogmas and ego. If you don't have any ego, you don't have any dogma, welcome to the mission of my Chaitanya. Dogmas have to go. Dogmas is the problem. A lot of people say, God brought so much suffering to humanity. God didn't bring suffering. Man brought suffering on them, themselves by following dogmas and all the things that they have created and separated themselves from each other. And therefore, now, if you read the mission, teaching, if you understand our teaching, see there is no dogma in it, it is just a path. Either you follow it or you don't. If you follow it, you will reap the benefit. If you don't, you will not. As simple as that. Therefore, there is no dogma and that's exactly what another expectation was. When this revelation comes, the dogma will die. Of course, a lot of people are still hanging to their dogma and say, no, no, I'm not going to let go. I love my dogma and, and my tradition and custom and all that. But the only tradition and custom is God's tradition and custom. And the dogma has to go and eventually human realize they are one, one humanity, one world under one God. And they can get along and bring peace to earth. So the lions can lie with the lambs and they will not, you know, devour each other. The lions, of course, the people who are, you know, catching and warrior and they like fight. And lions are those, they love the peace and they do not want to be bad. Go ahead, little one. if the mission was aware or had any idea of anyone who had plans to start building uh, a community of light mm -hmm. in, in, in the actual form. Yes, little one, the communities of light or the eternal divine path are principles. They are the principles that you can uh, bring to your life individually start with your family and then of course expand to other people and invite other people to come and join. Um, the plan is that uh, uh, there are six couples, married couples, men and women, come together and they create one unit in the communities of light and these six couples of course will bring other couples to themselves and when they became 12 couples they split to two units and when they are uh, 
12, 24 couples, they go to four units and on and on until they become 12 units of the unit of Thomas of Light. And then after we have 12 times 12 times 12 of the, this unit communities of light, we will have a community of light which around 118, 1,800 people in that community. So um, that is the goal. The goal is to create those communities of light. Then this communities of light, of course, will become a unit in decision making. Each unit in the communities is a unit of decision making and the communities of light itself become a unit of decision making in the uh, area they are at and uh, they also will connect to each other and create the uh, more hierarchy in the decision making process. So uh, each individual at this time should realize the principle of the communities of light. They meditate, awaken the spiritual forces, uh, direct their energy toward their area, environment. That's one of the things. Our teacher uh, traveling this summer is a very good point to uh, working toward the creation of the communities of light and uh, attracting people to come listen to him and uh, eventually, hopefully, here. And they will, you know, attract other like minded people to themselves and they can help them also come together and create a center up for the mission wherever they are. Uh, of course, that center become a point of reaching to each community and the more people get attracted, eventually we will have the communities of light all over the place. Uh, the, our path is the path of nonviolence. It is the path of education. And the more we educate human and the more they realize that they have no choice and it's God's word, they will come together and create, create communities of light. Uh, but you cannot just put uh, every communist of love or unit of communist of light, how do they follow and become a unit? As far as they follow the principle of the eternal divine path, they will become a unit of the community or a person of a community. So you, as individually, understand the principle of the communist of light and um, apply that to your own life, you know, meditate. Try to understand what ego is, what ego does to you, what self-centeredness means, what it means to have an ego which separates you from God. The more you understand that, you will not be separate from God more and more. Therefore, you are willing to share. You share with your husband, you share with your children, you share more about with your community. You, you reach to the community. You, you get involved with the uh, city hall and see what are they doing. You know, are they really helping people in the in the in their environment and and get involved, become, become a person involved in the community and attract more people to yourself and eventually, hopefully, you know, and, and then of course you have to sacrifice, you know, you, you have to put effort of your time, energy to the community and, you know, then to realize that you are not the doer, God is doer to you, you are just a channel for him to come through and become universal, shatter all the knowledge of the mind of, you know, separating yourself from uh, other groups or people. You know, everybody has the spark of God in them and all that. And eventually, of course, become part of it. The most important thing right now is to get this message out to humanity, to reach out. To, to right now, we are in the process of uh, actually choosing the facilitating body. Not, we are not even working on the communities of life. Facilitating body are the people who will give this message to every corner of the world and eventually uh, the communities of light will just start popping up all over the place and of course it can happen simultaneously creating the um, facilitating body at the same time you know reaching out and finding teachers who can teach the teaching and, and spread it out and at the same time create communities of light so it's a it's a all around you know plan so it's a very um, it's simple this the whole thing is based on the eternal divine path the five steps, awakening of the forces, you know, directing that energy toward the creation of communities of light, even toward your family, uh, sacrifice for it, so then I submit the rest of the, the action to God and become a universalist. Um, it, is, it is in a process to be manifesting, it is not manifested. It's only 20 years old. <laughs> 
you know, the other religion has been thousands of years. They haven't accomplished what we're trying to accomplish. I hope that makes sense. Go ahead, fun. Hi, I have a couple questions. I heard you quote from the Bible, um, and you talk of past and lives in your website, but if the Bible is the true she has inspired Word of God, and the Bible speaks of we live once and we die once, and there is no such thing as reincarnation, I'd like you to respond to that. And then also on Genesis 6, um, what is your um, thoughts on Genesis 6? So Genesis 6 says, Okay, um, can you can you tell us what the Genesis six? Are you telling the Genesis um, chapter one, verse six, or are you talking about the Genesis chapter six? Either way, can you just read that or, or give us the essence of it? Yeah, it talks about the sons of God. Um, and their offsprings were born giants. Mm, okay. okay. Very good. Okay. The first question is about the reincarnation. Uh, reincarnation is actually in the Bible. Uh, you, of course, uh, I, whenever I brought this up, uh, some people are trying to explain the way in many other ways, but there is no other way to explain this but the reincarnation. John the Baptist. Christ called him Elijah. Elijah left the earth or died or whatever happened to him hundreds of years ago. And then he comes to the womb of a woman, Martha. Martha. And uh, he was a child of Martha. He brought up as a person and he was Elijah. But he was called John the Baptist in that lifetime. How could it be possible? Is it really possible? that John the Baptist, you know, not being the reincarnation of Elijah. So here, very, with the great glare in the Bible, is telling us that the um, reincarnation is correct. Actually, reincarnation was in the Bible before, but priests took it away because it's, it's, it's much harder to control people if they believe in the reincarnation. Okay, I'll do, I'll do fine, don't worry, if I didn't do it this lifetime, I'll do it next lifetime. Of course, we know that's not true. Eventually, you know, this universe is going to finish and, and the energy is going to be completely withdrawn. If you're not made it in that time, you're not going to be in a good shape. You're going to be, you know, completely in a, unaware and destroyed and a uh, place that I don't think anybody wants to stay there. So there's an urgency to go to the pure consciousness, go back to God. At the same time, it is not as urgent as you have one lifetime, and if you don't listen to the priest, you're going to go to hell. Oh boy, I better listen to him or her. Okay? And that is when the power of control comes on the souls of the most religions. And um, therefore we can see that the reincarnation is in the Bible. It has been, it's been tried to take it away, but as usual, God is smarter than them. He is still left apart in the Bible that we can clearly see it is the Incarnation. There is no other way to explain that but to say, yeah, Elijah came in the womb of a mother woman and was incarnated. Beside that, how can, how can God be, you know, judge, just? If we believe, he gives us one life, he put us in a situation we never heard about whatever religion we are in. If we are a Jew, you, you don't know you have the Jews and people, you are the saved one. If you are a Christian, you, have, you, you know, Christ is the only way, I'm the saved one. If you are a Muslim, you have the last word, I'm the saved one. If I'm the Baha'i, I'm, 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 I've unified all of them, I'm the saved one. If you, because we usually follow what our parents follow, our society follow, our custom follow, our tradition follow. Now, we are born in that thing only, and we never progress. And then we die. Just a second. Okay. Sorry, I got the announcement about something in Paltor, so cut me off. Um, so we can see that 
the justice of God comes if you give me many, many opportunities, many, many lifetimes, and tell me, okay, now did you, did you follow what I said? I was born a Muslim or Hindus and Buddhists and Christian and Jews, all of them, and then I sit and listen to God, and then when they, all of them was unified, and you know, a prophet of God is a clear sign comes to us and say, look, these all religions are the same, and still I didn't follow him, God says, look, I gave you many opportunities, just like the story of the man who was drowning at the top of his, you know, um, house. And he was praying, God, please send me, you know, some help, you know. When he was praying, a, a, a boat come and said, come, let's go, you know, I'll rescue you. He said, no, no, thank you. I, I trust in God, you know. And the water keep coming up. A helicopter came and said, okay, we're going to rescue you. He said, no, no, I'm going to trust in God. A lock came by passing with just jump in and, 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 and go to the drive. He said, no, no, I'm not going to do it. And he, he got drunk, died. And then he went and, you know, complained to God, why did you rescue me? I trust in you. So didn't you say the lock, the, the, the boat, the helicopter? Uh, still you didn't take the help I sent you. You sent the prophet, you sent God's word all through history to all the people have been incarnated to this point. Now he's telling him, look, this is my plan. This is what God sent, you know, through the mission of Maitreya. And he's explaining to you how I did it. And you have been you know, in all this religion. You have been incarnated in the all this religion. And still when he comes and with the clear signs that fulfills all the prophecies that any other prophet has ever uh, fulfilled. Even gen the genealogy, another thing if, if you believe in that, is, is, is showing it. The teaching is incredible. The truth has been revealed in the mission of Maitreya is amazing how much truth has come to humanity, and they still you hang into your tradition and your religion, then God has all the right and say, no, you're not listening, you're not practicing, you're not going where I want you to go, therefore you're not going to be reincarnated, you're going to be bundled and thrown to the ignorance, which is hell. So we can see that reincarnation has, uh, is in the Bible, uh, and uh, it is that shows the uh, justness of God. God is just. God is not going to just give you one lifetime, put you in a situation that you have no uh, ability to progress, and then judge you. What kind of the just judge is he? If he doesn't give us enough uh, opportunity to redeem ourselves. So we can see that uh, reincarnation is something that is in the plan of God, and we have come many, many times, many lifetimes, Deja vu, what is deja vu? We remember we have been somewhere. Even in regression, people regress people, they remember previous lifetime. They even have talked about you know who they were, and then even 20 years ago, and they go and, and uh, look at the newspaper in that town, they say, yeah, he was there, there is a news about him. Or they started speaking in another language that they never knew about in this lifetime. So there is a lot of, a lot of evidence has been revealed to humanity at this time, that reincarnation, there is no doubt about it. Uh, your other question was about the uh, sons of gods and, and giants the giants. Okay. As we explained, in, if, you, if you study our book uh, called The Holiest of the Holies, though, uh, you will see that uh, uh, human was not in the same shape or state that we are in. They were more spirit. Actually, in the beginning, they were absolutely a spirit. They, they had no uh, material body. And we see later on that God made a, a coat of um, skin for them, and they give them flesh. And later on, of course, as they uh, more and more fall, uh, the, God closes their ability to access the uh, spiritual world. Because they had a spiritual access to the spiritual world, they misuse that spiritual uh, powers. They, uh, they, they, they ex actually they received, reached a point they could extract the life form and use it to uh, ex ex expand or uh, uh, make their life longer. That's why in the Bible we can see people live for 800, 900, 
years. And of course, that was the regular span of life then, but there were people that were even using it to live even longer. Therefore, God uh, decided at the time of the flood of Noah, and that is what the giants were formed. Because of this misuse of their um, third eye and spiritual power, they start creating giants. They became, you know, psychically, you know, very powerful, and they start misusing these powers and creating a lot of problem on earth. That's when God said, "My spirit will not um, strive with man anymore," and He decided to destroy those misusers. And uh, that is when the flood of Noah came. And of course, they were also the people who have reached few consciousness or at least very higher consciousness to a point that they could have been called uh, the son of, man, son of God. That is the son of God is. Son of God means higher consciousness and when you overcome, you become son of God. And they were sent to help the humanity, but unfortunately they become attached to the earth and the earthly thing and they fail. That they are the fallen angel on earth. Still there are many of them around. They have created many different religions, beliefs, and uh, systems on earth, and some people call them hierarchy or, or a brother of light, and, and they are becoming a, a abstract in the in the path of humans, and they stop going to God directly. They attach them to themselves. They became gurus and teachers. They attach the human to themselves and stuff to God. Therefore, uh, we can see those are the fallen sons of God. Therefore, um, and then, of course, God decides to destroy that system, and the flood of Nova comes, and flood of Nova, in the, after the flood of Nova, God closes the eye, the third eye of man, and makes it to two eye. Actually, if you have heard about Cyclops, the Cyclops, of, of, although it is a um, myth, it is also has some truth in it, because the Cyclops had only one eye, which was his third eye open, and usually they relate to Cyclops uh, the ability of psychic powers and doing things. And that is what the humans became. Their third eye became open. They had body, but they had one eye, and they had psychic powers. Actually, the, um, the spiritual world was more real to them than the external world. And in the time of the flood of Noah, he destroys that, uh, God destroys those beings and replaces them with human, which we are. We have two eyes. The only thing we see is the external world, and we think, oh, that is the real, that's the truth. That's not. When you open your third eye, you see, wow, there's much more truth in the spirit and power and energy and all that than these two eyes that we have. With this, God doesn't have to worry about us too much. If we progress, he opens our third eye and we see beautiful things in the spirit. If we are, we are, we are not worthy, we stay in two eye and we think this is the world. We even reject God exists. And of course, 99% of humans are in that state. They really don't believe God exists. They, they believe in their tradition, their custom, their ego, and they do not really know God. I hope that makes sense to you. Go ahead. Shafiq. He left. I guess she left, or, or he left, uh, and um, that's fine. They're open for discussion, or, or anything you want to discuss or bring up. Uh, again, the mission of Maitreya is the fulfillment of our prophecies. There is no dogma in the mission. We have a lot of truth. Uh, we are here every day during the weekend. We, the door, our scripture has been read. There is a lot of truth here. There is no other way to God but this mission and this teaching. Any other person, any other religion, any other teaching out there will not make it. This is the time of sundering. Go ahead, Lou. Salam, uh, Maitreya, and, uh, and all. Yes, uh, could you go more in depth uh, 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 about the, uh, the twin flame and, uh, and soulmate, please? Salum, Lou. Uh, thank you for um, your salum to all of us. 
We appreciate that, that you're sending salutation to the divinity within all of us. We do the same to you and everybody in the room. Um, twin flame and the other part. Uh, this is the topic a lot of people are interested. <laughs> it is the uh, explanation of explanation of it is very easily given in the, in the Genesis. God uh, took a part of um, Adam and made to woman or his other part um, and uh, of course they did not you know did not do very well they fell you know they fell together and uh, because they listened to the lower nature and that is when and then God created another being for Adam which was very similar to him and he was she was a, a help me in the stuff woe unto man he was help mate uh, to or twin flame and uh, therefore the twin flame is the helpmate of each person uh, but other part uh, there's a lot of flair and, and attraction and, and all the uh, things that most people think they're going to make them happy between them but at the end it is uh, kind of a not very um, a spiritual unless both have progress to the higher level of the spirit and they can overcome and they do not pull each other down to the lower nature of course they would be great together and all that but greater than that is the twin flame is the twin flame is the person who is very similar to the person and the two get along very fine and they realize they have a mission together and they help each other in that mission and progress at the same time uh, therefore those people who are looking for their other part uh, usually they end up with the um, disappointment because other part you know is not as exactly they thought he or she will be and they will not uh, stay together for long uh, but the twin flame usually you are very similar we are very um, one with each other in the will of God and doing his will or whatever it is you are doing together and you just love to love each other so much because you can you, you feel very comfortable with it on the other. It might not have the flair of your other part, but it is much it's calmer, it's much peaceful, and it's much more unity. So we can see that um, there is a difference between the other part or the twin flame. I hope it makes sense. If, if it doesn't make sense or you have more question, probably there is more explanation in do also about it. Go ahead, Kirusha. Yes, Matre, you were talking about the Cyclopses and, and the third eye, and um, I had a question about that because it was sort of like you were saying that um, people that get their third, third eyes open when they're on Earth now, um, it's because they're worthy of it and willing to progress. Is that um, pretty much always the case, that people don't have their third eyes open in this time unless they're really worthy? Uh, also, when, when the third eye is open, it's, uh, it's also a test. Uh, still, you are in the test to see how you're going to use the powers and the psychic energies that you gain toward your opening of the third eye. Of course, the third eye, uh, you know, some people see the third eye. You know, it's a beautiful eye, you know, that when you close the eye, you can see it. Of course, the goal is not to open the third eye. The goal is to follow the eternal divine path. There's no doubt about that. But as far as opening your third eye, eventually, of course, if you're worthy, you show that you really are uh, a spiritual, you like to go to spirit, you eventually see your third eye, and you will open, and you will have psychic energy and powers, and will realize that the uh, spiritual world is more real, that it's the external world, and so you become more a spiritual person. But of course, if you misuse the power still in that level, you know, you will, your third eye will be closed, or you will not make it. The, the, the best way to use the power of the of the third eye is to direct it toward the following of the eternal divine path. That is that that way your third eye becomes bigger and larger and huger, and <laughs> your understanding of the spirit becomes greater, and um, your two eyes become less and less important to you. But but the third eye becomes most important. Important. Yes, the the 
criteria for opening up your spiritual eye is to proving that you really mean you are a spiritual, you are called God. It is not the words, but your actions talks louder. You, you might know beautiful, pretty words, but if you're not uh, implementing those words to your actions and to your life, they just stay beautiful world and they still people see through you very easily that you have beautiful world, but you have not become it. But that's beautiful that you have beautiful world because you know the teaching, you know the beautiful world, and eventually you might become them. If you become your word in your action and your life, you become beautiful, just like your words. So uh, continue having beautiful words, but work toward becoming them. And also none of them ter opening up third eye, uh, spiritual powers, psychic energies, or all those things. These are none of them the goal of the life. None of them. The goal of the life is to become divine. The goal of the life is to, to follow eternal divine path. Those things if it came to you, just gently say thank you very much, put it away and say, I have things to do. I have to go and start the commons of life. I have to meditate on God, which is the spirit. Uh, even the third eye is not present in the pure consciousness, because even the third eye have a shape, a, a, a existence. Therefore, the goal is not to open your third eye, the goal is to know the spirit. Go ahead, Isaiah. Yes, I have a uh, historical question for you. I was wondering if you could tell me who Leviticus was. Okay, apparently you know who he was. Well, who was he? Dear sir, you are asking a question that I have no interest to know. The most interesting thing I like to know is God and His words, who is Leviticus is not going to help me reach pure consciousness or Godhood. That's why I'm asking, who was it? It means I don't know. You tell us who he was. And it's not important to me and I don't really care who he was. The most important thing, who is God? Okay? That, if we have any question, we can discuss. But if you know who Leviticus was, please tell us. Well, sir, I only came here to uh, acquire knowledge uh, about this particular topic right now. And I do have other questions, by the way. But I was hoping if you were all seeing and all knowing that you could shed some light upon this particular topic. Apparently you don't know our teaching. I am just a man the Spirit of God comes and gives the revelation and teaching to humanity. Christ was a man. He also called himself a son of man. He also calls himself no good. Only God is good. He prayed to God. Who did he pray to? He prayed to himself if he was God? So your teaching is full of dogma and your understanding is full of dogma, therefore you bring your dogma and you want to measure me with your dogmas, which is not going to work. So know our teaching first, realize what we teach here, what is the truth, what is the reality, throw your dogma and then come here and ask questions that is relevant, is related to the uh, mission, it helps you in your progress, and don't come try to, you know, throw your dogmas at us, because I don't know who is the Leviticus 23 is the most important part to know, and that is the holy days of God, and following them will unify humanity, and therefore it is more important to know that than knowing who he was, who cared who he was. The most important was what he said, what is in that book, what, what helped us in our path, you know, knowing who he was, who wasn't, doesn't, and it's not important. Go ahead, Luke. Yes, uh, back to uh, the, uh, the 
if one is married to one soulmate and then one finds one's twin flames, you know, what, is it uh, is it okay if one you know leaves one and then uh, get to to the other one that he thinks is going to help him most? But if you are with your uh, other part and you are happy, then why want to leave? If if you are not happy and it's uh, it is trouble and problem and you don't feel comfortable and she doesn't comfort feel comfortable and your relationship is very rocky and unhappy and all that, then it's it's we have to look in each uh, situation, each individual case. You have to study them and look at them and see what is the uh, situation. Is it redeemable? Is it possible that they can work it out with each other? Uh, if you reach the conclusion, no, this situation is terrible with both of them. It is neither good physically, mentally, or spiritually, especially spiritually. You probably have to sit together and talk about it and decide that it's not working. And probably one solution is, of course, to, to separate and go each other in different ways. And if in that time, of course, you are smart enough, you have learned from your previous relationship and you realize the other person is your twin flame and, and you want to go together, um, that's fine. But first you have to be very um, um, del del diligent in evaluating your situation with the person you are with now and separation or, or divorce should be very, happen very rarely. People should marry with each other for a lifetime and they should stay together you know for that period of time and do not take the uh, divorce uh, very lightly but it is something that it has to be evaluated at least to a point that really the situation is very bad you can't the best way for both of you is to you know, go away from each other in that case of course divorce or separation is recommended and you can leave each other and find another person or decide, well, there's no one for me and become a sannyasin or, or renunciate and dedicate yourself to God. So either way, um, the, the goal or direction should be godly toward the God and see if God wants this to happen and then after it happens, what are we going to do? But if, if you are in a very terrible situation, you know, which should be evaluated by you and your partner, then of course separation is recommended. Um, I don't know your situation or any situation you're talking about. Um, and uh, so in this, in this case, a spiritual teacher or, or people in the community can be very helpful because they can also help the couple to come closer to each other and not divorce easily or separate easily. Uh, but of course, we don't have such communities. So you have to rely on your own judgment and evaluate the situation to see how you can um, rectify it. Go ahead, Abdullah. Well, thank you. Uh, my question was, how do you pray? Praying is the really a deep from soul to soul relationship to God. Uh, probably the best way to pray is to first close your eyes and meditate for a while and go to your spirit and, uh, and uh, listen to God and within yourself. You know, your body is temple of God. God exists in it. God is in it. God is with you all the time. He never is separated from you. Uh, some people say, where is God? I can't find him. Just look within. It's, out, it's, it's not out there somewhere. You know, just look within yourself and you will find him. And if you felt in that uh, moment of deep meditation that you really like to pray to God, then go to your knees and, and, and try to, you know, probably the best way of position is the churches they have, they kneel and they put their uh, elbow somewhere and then put their head on their hand and deeply meditate in your prayer. And you don't have to pray loudly. You can pray inside to God and talk to Him and let Him know what you, you want to tell Him. He will listen. And if it's good for you and it is uh, acceptable and it is uh, doable and it's good for everybody, that, that will be done. But if, you, if, if your prayer is something 
is not doable or it's not good for you, but it's selfish prayer, probably it's not going to be fulfilled. So prayer in praying is talking to God, uh, soul to soul, a spirit to a spirit. Of course, how can you say a spirit to a spirit? Because it's the same thing. Really, what you really to know is, you know, know your spirit. And uh, therefore, uh, prayer is talking to God, which it means, means, really, prayer means I'm separated from God. You know, I pray to someone else. That is God. But uh, meditation is listening to God. It means you close your eyes and you listen to your spirit within and you connect to the spirit and listen what God has to say to you. And therefore, you know His will and uh, you will, your, your prayer eventually become whatever is your will, Father. You know, uh, your will be done, not mine. That is the greatest prayer probably any person can utter. And your prayer, of course, will be heard very well because His will for you is to follow the eternal divine path and join the communities of light and bring the kingdom of heaven on earth and then your life is going to be very simple, easy and all joy of knowing God. So pray in that, in most of the people pray in this time because they don't live in the communities of light. They want thing, they ask for things from God and they'll give it to them. You know, just like a little child that you know, is yelling and crying and the mother give him a toy. Um, if the child accepted, mother goes do whatever she wants to do and is not worry about her, the child. But if the child threw the toy away and said, no, I don't want a toy, I don't want the things, I want you. I want, I want to be hard with you, I want to be loved with you, I want to, you know, my mother, you know, I want God, I don't want these toys. If you do that, of course, God has no choice to say, okay, child, come here and you and him become one. So it's, it's, it depends on what kind of prayer you want to do, what, what, what you mean by prayer. If you want to pray to know His will, He has already given His will in our teaching. His will is to create the comings of light following the eternal divine path, creation of the kingdom of heaven on earth. But if you want the things, of course you can go and ask Him, and He might fulfill them, but you know, you better ask for the Creator. Go ahead, Abdullah. Thank you for the kind answer. Um, one last question. Uh, may I know something about the family tree of uh, Maitreya? <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, no, not much till six months ago. <laughs> I did not know very much. The only thing I knew was that uh, my mother always told me that, you know, told us that we are from the um, lineage of uh, another shop. That's all you know. I didn't, I didn't, didn't know how does it connect to another shah and uh, all that. And uh, a couple of months ago, around four or five months ago, a gentleman came here and asked me, you know, if I'm, I know about my lineage. I said, not really. The most important thing for me always was the teaching. And when I came to me, the way it came to me it was incredible, and, and, and the teaching was incredible. And I saw the beauty of it, and I said, wow, that's really going to help my humanity to realize there is only one God. Actually, I did not believe in God in the beginning uh, when I was growing up. And I have to tell you something also. Uh, my father's name was Abdullah, which is the same... Um, I'm sorry, Abdullah, Abdul Karim, which is the same meaning as Abdullah means the servant of God. Uh, so you, that's just my, my, my grandfather was Abdullah. And your name is very interesting to me and, and reminds me of uh, childhood and the grandparents or that. Anyway, so uh, this gentleman, you know, I told him, well, the only thing I know is, you know, we are from uh, the lineage of Nader Shah. And, uh, and he went and, and, and came to me and said, well, your, your lineage goes all the way to King David and uh, Adam. And later on, of course, in, in his research for how to connect me to Nader Shah, uh, he also came with a person that who was Sayyid, and uh, therefore when my lineage also go to Sayyid, or, or the Sayyid means the lineage coming from Prophet Muhammad, and 
and therefore my lineage goes back both to Prophet Muhammad and uh, King David. So uh, apparently it was very important. It was very important to this gentleman and, and, and he found it and probably it's very important to a lot of people also to know also this is fulfilled. Uh, therefore that's another sign that this teaching is from God. This is the last uh, days of uh, human uh, history. The new or golden age is coming to humanity and there is one God, one humanity and all this revelation have come from the same source. There is no separation between religions and all have to see that. If they see that, this uh, bickering, destruction and all the things that they do to each other on earth and in the pal dog, interestingly, you know, will go away and they realize that, yeah, you know, God said that there is going to be a prophet also going to come from the Ishmael. If God said that, how can I say, you know, how can I say only, you know, with the, with the prophet who came from Isaac? I have to accept also the prophet who came from Ishmael also. And also, Prophet Muhammad said there is going to be another prophet come from my lineage, which was Bob, and Bob brought the teaching of the universalism, and of course, Baha'u'llah had to bring it to the West and all that. So we can see that the Muslims say, oh yeah, okay, yeah, that is God, he said, Muhammad said, such a person was going to come. And then, of course, we know that God is talking about the elects, all, he, in all his revelation. Who is this elect? He called them elect. Of course, you know, um, Jews say we are the elects, because we are the chosen people. You know, Christians, Christians say, no, we are the elect, we have the last word, I mean, we have the only way. And Muslims say, well, we are the elect, we have the last word and all other. But what does it really mean, God, by elect? Our teaching very clearly explains what he meant. Those who follow the eternal divine path. And the eternal divine path unifies all religions together and shows who are the elects. And that is who we are calling here, the elect. Those who hear our teaching, love it, and say, yes, my true makes says I was, I knew it, I knew there is a relation between our religion. There is some unity between them, and there is one God. There is not many gods of many religions and sects. So we can see that, you know, they jump, they are not the one who come here and ask me, who is Leviticus, <laughs> or is my dogma is better than, or some obscure, you know, uh, verse in, the, in, 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 in some uh, holy books and say, what does that mean? You know, or do you know who that person is? Who cares? Does, does it help you in your spiritual progress? Does it help you in your reaching pure consciousness or higher consciousness? Why human is so adamant to prove God wrong? Why don't you go and prove him right? See that, you know, prophecies are fulfilled. See that, you know, unity of our religion have come. See that seven seeds are open. The book with the seven seeds is revealed to humanity. See that, you know, that the, the, the prophecy of God, you know, have all come to end. See that this is the end time. And you are still hanging into your religion and custom and, and trickery. You know, why? Practice. Go to God. You know, I am sorry for such a souls that are still like hanging into these things and, and not seeing the beauty, the sun, all wonderful things that have come to them and they're not able to see. I am sorry for that. But God said that is the way it's going to be. There's going to be shafts. There's going to be wheat. And if they're going to want to see shafts, shafts, so be it. Who am I? Argue with God. I am just a plain messenger. That give me a message to humanity and you. If you don't see it, it's between you and God. And I believe that those who do not see it, will not be reincarnated for a long, long time. Okay? And those who are the weak will bring the golden age on earth and the kingdom. So this is the end time. This is the time of sundering. That is the time of putting the shaft away and bring the wheat to the barns of God. Go ahead, Lou. Yes, uh, my question is concerning uh, one part.
passage of the Bible in uh, Zechariah? Do you want me to, Zechariah, do you want me to, to read that? Yes, go ahead. What was it? Zechariah. Zechariah. Yes, you see that, that is um, Zechariah chapter 6, verse, uh, verse 12. And he speaks unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall go up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Can you please uh, uh, expound on that? Wow, oh, the man who is the branch, from the branch of David. Mm -hmm. It's one of those. So go and build the temple of the Lord. Yeah, probably <clears throat> Brother Frank is going to be, or John is going to be, better person to answer that question. Branch, branch to me sounds like genealogy, doesn't it? Just like a, from the branch being the genealogy like a tree, <laughs> you know, come from the root and spread downward. And uh, of course, as, as we said, as I said, you know, it seems more and more to me that it's very important that this thing is being fulfilled and the genealogy is being confirmed that yes, it is from the branch of the David, and uh, go ahead, John. I'll, 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 I'll yield the floor to you. Go ahead. Uh, Salome, Betraya. Uh, Salome, Lou, and everyone. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the uh, verse in uh, Zechariah is actually very similar to the ones that we'll find in the book of Ezekiel, in which, uh, if you're familiar with Ezekiel, you'll notice that there's a temple which is constructed uh, in front of Ezekiel, and uh, someone enters that temple coming by way of the east, uh, and, and the figure is called glory of God. So uh, in the book of Ezekiel, it says the glory of God enters into the temple facing the east. Here, when it mentions branch, this is probably a, a meaning that it will be from the branch of the uh, tribe of uh, David, um, <clears throat> so, the, so the, uh, the lineage will probably be from David, that's going to enter the temple. But, of course, it cannot just be um, from David itself, because uh, only the Levite priest could enter the temple, so this is also a priestly figure. This is also someone of very high spiritual quality. Um, of course, uh, so it, it's a symbolism of that, of that as well. And it's really talking about the glory of God. And when the glory of God enters this new temple in Ezekiel, it's not necessarily the construction of a literal physical temple. Many people await the time when uh, the Jews or whoever will build the temple by these specifications. But that's not the point. The point is when you enter the temple and you go into the holiest of the holies, and there you say uh, the name of God. If you remember the Old Testament, that's what happened. So really... It's the holiest of the holies, and in that, you're going to find the name of God. So really, this mission is the fulfillment of that revelation, because here, it's set out before you, the holiest of the holies. It's our revelation. And in this mission, um, through four initiations, eventually, with great struggle and His grace, you will receive His name, which we call the Word. So this is actually the fulfillment of that prophecy as well. So really, there are many levels that that prophecy is fulfilled in this mission. Uh, and I could probably go on much longer uh, in discussing that. Does that make sense? Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that, that is fine. Uh, that, that is fine. <laughs> of course, we do have a temple in the mission, which will be built in the uh, shape of the greatest sign. And there will be six uh, doors, which s six great religions of the world can come and enter it. Each person or each religion can come from their own door. But when they are in the middle of the temple, there is no separation. There is no uh, religion that is separate from any other religion. That they are one in the center as one humanity under one God. So the temple is being revealed also, it is here, and of course eventually we will build them all over the world, hopefully, you know, eventually we have 12 of them in 12 regions.
region of the world, and of course they can build more of them. So even the temple has been given to the humanity how to be built it, and how each religion is a part of the temple, and when each person enters the temple in their own door, in the center, they become divine. They become one from God, and there is only one. There is not many religions, there is no separation between them. Therefore, you can see every day we are receiving more truth about the beauty of this mission and uh, supports what we have claimed. And hopefully that will spark in you the fire to go to know more about our teaching and our elect and will come and become with us and will help humanity to bring the peace on earth and the goodwill to man and the unity. Go ahead, Abdullah. Thank you once again. Uh, my question was, in your opinion, is this uh, towards the middle of time, or is this towards uh, pushing more towards the end of time? Yes, it is uh, um, the end of the old age, or or what Hindus uh, call Kali Yoga, and beginning of the new age, or the golden age, which has been prophesied in all the uh, prophecies and religions to come. The golden age is the age of true spiritual understanding and bringing the beauty of God in every level of human existence. This is the end of this era. Of course, there is another end, which is the end of the creation, when the original energy which used to create the universe will be exhausted and all things will divert back to um, where they were before the creation. Uh, in this time, uh, which the new uh, golden age is coming, those who do not follow these teachings, those who do not see the unity, those who hang into their dogmas and tradition and customs, will not be born for the next 12,000 years. Uh, because in this last, next 12,000 years, many, many will reach pure consciousness and higher consciousness. This is the time of the spiritual uh, uh, renaissance and upliftment and many will go to God. Uh, so you can see there is a long time of golden age is coming. Uh, this is the first resurrection. But uh, at the end of many, many uh, billions of billions of billions of years in the future, when the energy of the universe is exhausted, it will no longer uh, be existing and will be destroyed. In that time, if you have not reached the pure consciousness, you have not reached the Godhead, you will stay in limbo or, or in a, what call him hell for billions of billions of billions of years. So it's not that everybody can eventually get there in you know in many lifetimes. There is an urgency also there that to reach there. That last destruction of the universe is gonna be the the great end time. So there is two end time. There is the age end time, which is we are at the beginning, at the end of the, the Kali or uh, previous age, which lasted around 12,000 years. We are in the beginning of the other, not the next age or golden age, which lasts for another 12,000 years. So there are two. That is that is the age, finishing of the age and the golden age to come, and the other one. The end time is the, when the destruction of the universe comes, and by time, if you haven't made it, you really are in a bad, bad shape. So, um, so we have to really recognize between the two end times. We are at the end time of this age. I hope this makes sense.
شوید عبدالله We shall see, yes. And there, is, there is no doubt you have to test the spirit. You should not believe in anyone, but follow the spirit which is pure and from God, and there is no impurity in it. If there is the slightest impurity, you should run away. Very good. God bless. Again, this is the teaching has been given to you. Now you know it. You know the will of God. Go ahead and tell everyone, anyone, if you believe in it. If you don't, test the spirit. Go see. Go, go read. Uh, study. Search. Knock the door. You know. Make sure first you really truly understand what the teaching is and what the claim. And if you proved it to yourself, I can't prove it to you. Nobody can. Only God and you can prove it yourself. Go and prove it yourself. When it's proven, then know that God has sent another prophet, the revelation for the last days, the unity of our religions. There is only one God, one humanity. And then go ahead and follow it. And tell everyone in the world about it so you can also, also, um, bring everyone also to realize that beauty. So, please go ahead and talk to everyone, spread the message, spread the teaching, and all that. That's what? It's not going through at all. Not going through? Actually, Abdullah was talking while you were talking because you were What was he saying? I, I wasn't listening. Okay. Am I going through now? No? Okay, I'm going to go out and in there. Can you hear me now? Can you hear? The Aziz, can you hear me? No? Hello? Hello? Can anybody hear me? Type if you can hear me. Anybody can hear me?
How many is 1777 today? Yes. Okay, can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me? Tell, tell Abdullah to us. Okay, can you hear me? Hello? Okay, yeah, well, uh, apparently we had some problem with the microphone here. It's, it's fixed. Uh, as, uh, as was I was saying, you know, that you all hear me here again. I hope it made sense to you. Again, when you hear this, it's between you and God. If you see the truth in it, now you have been called to go and tell everyone else about it. You are commissioned to give this message to every human on earth, whoever you are in contact with, tell them at least once. Then leave them to God. It is not up to you or me to bring them to God. God already know them. God already prepared them for this mission. And also they know God. And when they hear the message, they say, yes, that makes sense. If it is your husband, your wife, your child, your neighbor, your family, if they don't want to go to God, they don't want to hear this message, do not worry. They have not been called for it. If they are hearing it and jumping of joy and say, yes, it makes sense, then they have called for it. It's not up to you. You cannot bring them to God. God only can bring them to God. You can try hard, but eventually it's up to God to bring them. Go ahead, Brother Frank. Thank you, my Lord Maitreya. You know, I was reminded when Isaiah 1 came and asked you the question of Leviticus, uh, I was reminded of the disciples coming to Esau the Christ and asking him when the end time would be. Mm -hmm. And Esau the Christ, that is the one called Jesus, answered and said, no one knows the hour mm -hmm. but the Father. He said knew all things relative to his mission. Exactly. The end time was not relative to his mission. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So That's when those who come asking obscure questions that are not relative, even he said did not know. But it's become obvious to us, my Lord, that you know all things relative to your mission. And the glory be unto God forevermore. I'll post that scripture if I may. May God bless your soul, Brother Frank. Your realization is correct, and that is the truth that came out of your mouth. That is God's truth and the reality. I leave all of you to God. May God bless you and keep you. And remember, this is the revelation for the whole humanity. This is the end time. This is the time of something. Salam alaikum.